experienced them in many different names. My little sister hated them, and she said they were all cringe. And uh, she, she's like in her uh, early 20s, so almost a different generation. So at one point, I just kept rambling names, and she said cringe, 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 and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna call it nothing. She's like, yeah, do that. This is fun. Ah, what do we talk about? Probably nothing. <laughs> That's a good name. You should name your company. No more memes. No more memes. No more puns. Okay, uh, Carl. We spoke uh, when you were still at OnePlus, I think, okay. and you were not really sure what you were going to do, and then. I met you again when you were really sort of sure what you want to do. Mm. Then we met again when you were, okay, I, I'm damn sure what I want to do and I want to raise some capital. And then we also met when you had already raised capital and there have been different stages. And I've been through some of this journey. It's not my first company as well. And I can share some of the experiences, but I'm curious to know why did you start this company? What is the unfinished business that you are trying to accomplish with this new company? I've been a tech fan since I was a kid. I was the first kid in my school, the annoying thing to get because it was using the FireWire port. So I was a PC user. I had to buy another PCI card, install that into my PC to use the iPod. So that's how excited about technology I was. I was also the first uh, person that I knew to buy the, the first iPhone. It was only available on AT&T. Uh, in the U.S., you had to buy it or have, have a friend buy it for you, pay a $450 cancellation fee, and then get it shipped to wherever you are, and then jailbreak it, and then you can use it. So I would go to extreme lengths into you know, trying all the new technology because I was super excited about it. And it, that continued for a few years. You know, the first Android phone, the first iPad, the first... And back then, it felt like everything just kept improving all the time and you had a future to look forward to where there's always new and better and more innovative things coming. And uh, in the past couple of years, five years, 10 years, gradually that feeling has been dying uh, inside of me as well. So, I mean, I spoke to a few, few people and uh, we shared similar ideas. And uh, despite this being really hard, um, I mean, look around, there's only super large companies doing this, so it, and a lot of startups have tried. In the past 10 years, everybody, every startup who's tried has failed. Um, it, we knew it was really hard, but then again, looking around, if we didn't try, who else would? So we just decided to go for it, um, make products, make a brand, make products that we ourselves would like to see, or a younger version of ourselves would like to see on the market. That's pretty interesting. I have a question. Uh, you could have picked up an easier business. Why do hardware again? Hardware is hard on many fronts uh, compared to, I would say, building a software tech company. Uh, why is it just because of familiarity that you had or you felt that there was a real opportunity that got you super excited? It's hard, but it's also easy. And software is easy, but also hard. The reason why I say that is, I think for hardware, the entry barrier is really huge just to enter. But once you enter and you have a product, getting a user base is relatively easy. I think now with software, you know, I, I guess when the App Store just first came out, it was like a gold rush. The first apps immediately got distribution. But nowadays, making software is kind of democratized. So getting distribution is really hard. So if, I mean, I have no ex experience in getting distribution for software. And then you see the trends. For instance, in the latest WWDC, Apple announced the buy now, pay later. And uh, it was kind of disruptive to, to a few companies out there. 
So I think me and the team were familiar with this, and I think we know how to distribute this kind of product. And if we reach some level of scale, then we also have the opportunity to uh, do hard, uh, software and services as well. well. We'll get to the meatier topic. How to build a brand? How to build a brand? Or let me just go uh, one click into further into this. Uh, most people from the tech industry and a bunch of startups that we've seen around us are terrible at building a brand around their business. But brand makes it easy to do your business. Uh, you've done it consistently multiple times. I admire all the things that you guys do and the way you do it. Uh, first, how did you bring that DNA in you? What, are the, uh, what is the origin story for you? What is the origin story for you? Because you are sharp at this, you get it. And, and it's not about hiring one person and who does the marketing. It's about really getting every decision, every choice right. Uh, how did you uh, think about this and rules that you've always followed? We, uh, we talked about values on, uh, I think, Monday or Tuesday in the office. And, uh, you know, Levi is one of my co-founders. He said, if there's one thing he wishes for the team is for everybody to have a sense of hunger, always. And I think um, that was also how I started on my journey, being a first-generation immigrant in a Western society. Uh, you know, I didn't have the same toys as my Western friends around me. I didn't have the same uh, weekly allowance as everybody else. So <laughs> I think the hunger started from there. Just got to figure things out. So I've been uh, trying a lot of things. You know, I started making websites when I was 12. Uh, I had one of the biggest websites in the world for illegal game downloads when I was 14. Um, I'm just trying to, I mean, my uh, Instagram handle is get paid. Just trying to make money, you know. Um, so, so with that kind of experience from since I was 12, just constantly trying new things, I think I got a you know, sense of familiarity with what is it that consumers want, how do we attract them. Um, but if I had to distill what brand building is for me, uh, maybe it's easier to understand if I first explain what it's not or the way to do, like how to do it wrong. And I think the way in which you shouldn't build brand is to view the brand as just the story you tack on to your company at the end of the day. Like, let the product guys do whatever they do, let the engineers do their work, let the sales and marketing team figure out what the brand is. That's, uh, that doesn't really work, I think. I think the best example is, actually one example that we discussed a lot in, within the team uh, is, is Nike. Nike, they sell a commodity product, but they're worth a lot as a company and, and consumers love them. And I don't know if you guys remember, but a couple of years ago, uh, they had this ad with, uh, what's his name, Colin Kaepernick. Uh, very controversial for US audience and US companies because this guy, he didn't kneel, so he's a sports, sports person. And before you start a match, you should kneel in front of the American flag and sing the national anthem. Instead of kneeling with both feet, he only kneeled with one leg because um, he felt that black minorities weren't being respected in the US. And Donald Trump back then was still president and was like tweeting about this. Oh, this guy is uh, unpatriotic, un-American. And Nike used this person as a spokesperson, main spokesperson in the ad. So I was like, wow, if I'm the CMO or CEO of Nike and the marketing team is like, hey, we want to use this person that's hyper uh, controversial and potentially have half of the US hate my brand because I launched this campaign because more than half of the people vote for uh, Donald Trump. How do you make a decision like that? I think for 99% of the companies, it's just like, hell no, don't do this. But I think what, 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 it, what happened at Nike was like, okay, what's our purpose? We want to inspire people or everybody, we believe that everybody's an athlete. And I think when you have your purpose clear, then your decision becomes easy. Okay, by running this ad, will I inspire more people to want to become an athlete? If yes, let's run it. If no, let's, let's not run it. So I think in the end, let's, I think the best way of building a brand is to unite all the teams uh, on a higher level, purpose or vision or mission, and then make sure that every team executes, executes against that because 
a brand is every single touch point a consumer has with the, with the company, not just their advertising material, but also the product, but also the service, but also interacting or bumping into an employee somewhere. So I think that's a very long answer to a short question. Um, why is it hard for people to understand importance of brand? I'm sure in your company,